Hello everyone, I hope you're having a great day. In this video, I'm going to explain in detail how you can create the best and most effective build for the Jisha's wheel, better known as the Pizza Cutter. This weapon scales C with the strength and dexterity and it has a very decent passive bleed build up. The unique skill of the weapon works as a chainsaw, however these chainsaw attacks are not going to build up the successive attacks buffs and it will leave you very very vulnerable. So instead of being a very useful attack, it's mostly a useless skill that makes the weapon feel like it's not actually worth it. But the real deal with this weapon are the archer attacks that will actually get the benefits from the successive attacks buffs and the charge attacks buffs. Therefore combining these two benefits we are going to get a very good amount of damage. I am going to be using this build to defeat every major boss of the DLC without taking a single hit. With that being said let's jump straight into the build. If you don't want to farm runes or materials for your Elden Ring builds, MMOEXP is the best web service where you can easily acquire as much runes and items as you wish for the best price. Use my code CARLOSEN to get a 5% discount on your purchases. Thanks MMOEXP for sponsoring today's video. Today we are going to use the Jesus wheel on plus 10 and any seal we have available to cast our main buffs. We are going to use any weapon with the Raptor Optimista Shovar to easily dodge the Radan slide explosion attack and the Commander Gaius charge attack. And as this time we are not going to use the skill of the weapon and we will focus on the R2 attacks, we are going to use the Jellyfish Shield, that even if it was nerfed before the release of the DLC, it is still a very useful tool. We are going to be rocking 3 pieces of the Rakshasa's armor set to increase our damage by 6% and the White Mask that will increase our damage by 10% with each bleed proc. The best talismans we can use for this build are the Axe Talisman, the Millicent's Prosthesis, the Rodin Windsor Insignia and the Lord of Blood's Exultation. And if we want to use this build against an enemy that doesn't bleed, we can use the entire Rakshasa's armor set and replace the Lord of Blood's Exultation with the Radagon Soul Seal. In our Flask of Wondrous Physic, we are going to use the Blood Soaking Crack Tear and the Thorny Crack Tear. However, as I always tell you, feel free to use any other tier you find useful. With this weapon, we are going to be dealing only physical damage, that's why our best body buff is going to be Blood Boil Aromatic. But if you don't like crafting, feel free to use Flame grant me strength. This build consumes a lot of stamina so be sure to craft some pickle turtlenecks to boost your stamina regeneration speed. In order to obtain the max performance of this weapon and to have an optimal build, we are going to use 50 on vigor, 14 on mind, 40 on endurance, 66 on strength, 61 on dexterity, 25 on fate and 16 on arcane. Golden vow and flame grant me strength are going to be our main buffs. And if you want to proc bleed faster you can use the swarm of flies, I will only use it in very difficult fights where the jellyfish shield is not going to be very helpful. But in most scenarios using this incantation is not going to be necessary. And as you can see I have my Scattered Blessing on the level 20 and if you want to deal the max amount of damage possible against the toughest DLC bosses, be sure to have it on the level 20 as well. Now I'll show you how to buff your character with this build. First you have to use your Flask of Wondrous Physic as always, then you are going to cast Golden Vow and you are going to use your Pickle Turtleneck which is optional, remember that. Now we are going to use our body buff, in this case it's going to be Blood Boil Aromatic but feel free to use Flame Granny Strength. Now before engaging with any enemy you are going to to use the jellyfish shield because we are going to use the R2 attacks of the one-handed moveset. Why we are going to use the one-handed R2 attacks instead of two-handing the weapon? This is very very obvious. If you use the two-handed R2s we are not going to connect the last hits of the spinning wheel. But if we use the one-handed moveset we are going to be able to connect every single hit available from this attack. Now that we have completed and optimized our build, what do you say if we begin with the boss fight? Let's go, this one was very good, guys. <laughs> oh, there you go. Take all of those things. Oh, I, I managed to hit her. Take this quickly. Oof. Got down? There we go. Come on, baby. Oh my god, this is so insane, bro. <laughs> Hopefully, we'll have a better luck this time with the first part of the fight. That's a better dodge. Very unlucky, bro. Very unlucky, guys. Oh my god.
Wow, how I... Wow, that's good, that's good, I guess. Come on. Come on, charge it. Destroy him. <laughs> Come on. Okay, that's a little bit of a stun damage. I'll take it. Come on. Oh, let's go. <laughs> I think, okay, okay, I'll use it now. There it goes. That's very nice, bro. Wow. That is indeed a lot of damage, guys. Oh my god. He's going down? <laughs> that is amazing, bro. If I only need to cast it twice, it will be a lot better. Go guys, Veil. Maybe first try? Can we get it on the first try? Quickly. This weapon is huge. Oh, this is nice. This is actually nice. A very powerful hit here. Okay, okay, okay. careful here. Take the risk. Let's go. Come on, let's do it. And give it the second one, come on! Oh, very beautiful! First try, nice! The hit! Oh my god, no! Why? Why is it? Oh my god. Yeah, I'll take it, I'll take it, bro. This this boss fight is terrible. It's terrible, guys. I'll take it.